In this short video, which is the second of our videos on some properties of the Laplace transform, we're going to look at functions which result in a translation on the t-axis. And it has to do with this unit step function. So the idea of a unit step function, you can think of it as being an on-off function. It's off up until the value of t equals a, so off meaning having zero, and then it turns on making it one when t uh, reaches a. And so this is a, a nice way to express piecewise defined functions. So if you look at this piecewise defined function, uh, which is a very common type of piecewise defined function, you say, oh, I'm going to have it have one formula, g of t, uh, for the values of t between 0 and a. And then once I reach a, I want to have it a new function, h of t. So the way we would write this is we'd say, OK, uh, f of t then would be g of t. In order to say it's going to be g of t up until a, we're going to have to say, well, let's subtract off g of t when it reaches a. So g of t times u of t minus a, that's going to be g of t uh, for all values of t greater than or equal to a. And so this, these two terms will add to make 0 when t is greater than or equal to a t is less than a, then it's just going to be g of t. At the same time, when I reach t equals a, I want h of t to be turned on. In other words, this product h of t times the unit test at t minus a means that h of this product is zero, but then until you reach t equals a. And when you reach t equals a, then this product will be h of t. Let's look at another example. So here we have three branches, but two of the branches are just zero. So in other words, we want the function to be zero until you reach a, and then it's going to have a formula g of t between a until you reach b, but at b it's going to go back to zero. Well, how can we express that using this unit step function. So we want it to be 0. So g of t times the unit step function t minus a. That means that this is going to be 0 until you hit t equals a. Then the unit step function will have a value of 1. So this is going to, this product will be g of t until we hit t equal to b. Because then when t equal to b, then this turns on and we'll be subtracting off g of t. So both of them will be on. I'll have g of t minus g of t, which will get me back to 0. So here's the connection then. If I take my input function and multiply well, my input function shifted by a units, multiply it by the unit uh, step function there, which gets turned on when t equals a, then the resulting Laplace transform is just the Laplace transform of the original function without the shift, and then times an exponential whose exponent is negative a times s. So suppose I want to evaluate the Laplace transform of this piecewise defined function. We actually evaluated this using the definition. You can always check your answers by going back to your back to the definition, though sometimes it might be very challenging to perform the, the integration. But this was very simple. We were able to do it. Now let's use it, or let's find the same Laplace transform using this theorem. So I'm going to rewrite, uh, well, first of all, notice that I'm going to say there's, 
with a branch where t is greater than or equal to three. I'm just going to say that g of t is the constant function two. If I shift that constant function by three, so I replace t with t minus three, it's still going to be two. It's always two. That's the idea of a constant function. So I could rewrite the function f of t as g of t minus three times the unit step function of t minus three. And recall that the uh, Laplace transform of a constant is just that constant over s. So in our case, the Laplace transform of the g function is just two over s. And so now when I apply the theorem, I'm going to have two, two over s, and then uh, I have to multiply it times e to the negative three s, which is the same answer that we had when we use the definition. All right, so here we're told or given f of t in terms of two unit step functions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, the graph. So what's going to happen here? Well, the, until I get to t equals two, this function value is just going to be two because the other two terms are zero. They're turned off. At t equals two, the first term gets turned on. The second or the third term here, the first unit function gets turned on. The second unit function is still off. So I'll have two minus three, I'll have negative one when I start at two up until I am right at three. Uh, because then what happens is after three, or starting at three, is the last unit function gets turned on, which means that it has a value of one. So I'd have a value of two minus three plus one, which will be zero. So this has three branches here. And then the, the, up until you get to two, so starting at zero and getting to two, doesn't really tell us the, um, that the domain is restricted, but since we were taking the Laplace transform, it's implicitly understood that we're gonna start at zero. So it, it has a value of two up and two, but not including t equals two. At t equals two, the second term becomes negative three. So two minus three is negative one. And it remains at negative one up until we get infinitely close to t equals three. At t equals three, the last unit step function has a value of one. And so we're back to zero. All right, so that's good to understand what that function looks like, but our uh, question is asking us to find its Laplace transform. So we'll go do it one at a time here. Um, there's no work involved with the first term. The second one, we can think of this as being one times, so a constant one times the unit step function uh, of t minus two. And the same thing with the third term except for now it's t minus three. So the plus transform of two is two over s. The plus transform of one is one over s, but I multiply that times negative three. And then because of the unit step function, I'm gonna have a, a exponential e to the minus two s in that term. And then because of the unit step step function of t minus three, I'll have e to the negative three x. Now we have an inverse form. It is just simply uh, undoing the original theorem. So now we just take the inverse Laplace transform of each side. And so let's see if we can practice taking some inverse Laplace transforms. So in part a, my a value is two and the inverse Laplace transform of uh, one over uh, s minus four is e to the four t. So putting those two together, I'm going to have a unit step function uh, 
where it gets turned on at t equals 2. And I'm going to have the e to the 4t shifted by 2. So it'll be e to the 4 parentheses t minus 2. In part b, I'm looking at the exponent here. The exponent tells me what my value of a is. So a is pi over 2. And I know that the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus 9 is cosine of 3t. So I'm going to have to put those together. I'm going to have a unit step function with t minus pi over 2 as the argument. And that's going to be multiplied by cosine of 3 parentheses t minus 2. And cosine of 3 parentheses t minus, oh, I'm sorry, I said 2. It should be pi over 2. It's the a value. And then times unit step function t minus pi over 2. Now, another way of looking at the, our theorem is saying that, oh, you could have, um, if you're trying to find the Laplace transform of the product of a function and a unit step function, you could have the e to the negative pi s, and then you could have uh, that multiplied by the Laplace transform of g of t plus a. So this is the first time we see a t plus a appearing in any of our formulas or theorems. So let's see if we can evaluate this, remembering that we're going to have that t plus a. So we have the Laplace transform of uh, cosine of t times a unit step function, which gets turned on when t equals pi. So our value of a is pi. So we should just be able to directly apply the uh, formula. So I'll have e to the negative pi s. And then I have uh, cosine of t plus pi. I need to calculate its Laplace transform. Well, cosine of t plus pi is the same as uh, negative cosine of t. So that will make that next step a little bit easier. I'll just bring a negative sign out in front. And so then um, the Laplace transform of cosine of t is just s over s squared plus 1. I'm going to make a quick verification. Think about that formula for a minute here. And I apologize. I knew that uh, this is not always pi in the formula here. Of course, that wouldn't make sense that it's always pi. That, of course, should have been e to the negative power of a s. So um, in our example, though, clearly that becomes e to the negative pi s. All right, so let's uh, use some of these ideas to solve this initial value problem. Uh, the right-hand side is a piecewise defined function, so we'll go ahead and start by writing that uh, using a unit step function. And then we'll go ahead and take the Laplace transform of each of the terms. Uh, the right-hand side is just three times the example we used in example four. So we already know its results. Uh, so I just went ahead and copied the results here and multiplied it times 3. So y of 0 is 5. We'll go ahead and replace that. We'll factor out the coefficients of y. And what we'll get here now is 
y equals or uppercase y equals two terms. Now the first term is not a problem. Uh, that's just going to be a direct exponential. But here we have a, a fraction, a rational uh, expression in terms of s, and then multiply times this exponential. So I can't forget about the exponential, but for now I'm going to just focus on the rational expression and use partial fractions again. You can see that in the coefficients, uh, I have a common factor of three halves. So I will factor that out. I still have the e to the negative pi s, but everything that's inside the brackets here is something where I can find the Laplace transform or inverse Laplace transform uh, quite simply. I'm going to have a cosine and then a sine and then an exponential. But I've also got the e to the negative pi s. And so what does that mean? That means there's a unit step function involved here. So I'll have cosine of t shifted by pi. Uh, pi is my value for a times uh, the unit step function which gets, which gets turned on when t equals pi. Similar thing for the sine and then for the exponential again uh, this would normally the, the without the e to the negative pi s the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 we saw over here in the very first term would be e to the negative t, but now I have to shift it by pi. So that's why I have e to the negative parentheses t minus pi. So I have a common factor of the step function. So I'll factor that out and I will take advantage of some trig facts or trig identities that cosine of t minus pi is a negative cosine of pi and sine of t minus pi is a negative, I've made a mistake again, not cosine of pi, that would be a constant, but cosine of t. And same idea with sine. And so now I can, uh, I get negative signs on all of the terms. So I went ahead and factored out the negative sign that made, plus here and now everything is positive inside or has positive coefficients inside the bracket.